see the bait, I can see the fish. Oh, 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 oh. Got her, dude. I got her. Get the net. I got her. Just turn back on it. Oh. Got her. I got her. Got her. Got it. Go. Oh, we got her. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh my gosh! Stay on! Stay on! Stay on! Oh, let's go! Oh, the on the glide, bait! What's up, everybody? Captain Gino here. Today, I'm coming out with a very exciting video. Today's video is going to be a bed fishing masterclass. I'm not the bed fishing master, don't get me wrong, uh, but I do spend a lot of time on the water. I have a ton of experience out there. I'm out on the water every single day, so I really get to see firsthand what goes on with these fish during the spawn here in Florida. Outside of Florida, I can't really tell you a whole lot. I can tell you, speak on what happens here in Florida that I see with my own eyes. And I wanna share that today with you guys. I'm gonna give you so much more than just how to catch a fish off a of bed. I will do that as well right i'm going to include that i'm going to include the formula i use to predict how long i think it's going to take for any particular fish to be caught whether or not i think they can be caught or can't be caught or if i'm just wasting my time i will give you the lures as well but i'm going to talk to you about when to look for these spawning bass what months they spawn here in florida how long the males are up there how long the females are up there what causes the males to pull in what causes the females to pull in and what happens with different changes in weather uh, things of that nature, water temperatures, the whole nine yards, all the information that I've been able to observe of being out on the water over the years, being out there every single day. I see some crazy, crazy things out there. And it seems like every single year I learn something new. And, and these are not things you're going to find in a textbook somewhere. They're not things you're going to find on the internet. I have not really found any legit Florida specific data that's really accurate. You know, there's plenty of data from the universities, tons of things that I've read here and there. Uh, but I've seen a lot of conflicting information out there. But I'm going to share to you what I've seen with my own eyes, what I believe to be true. And hopefully it's going to help you to catch more fish this season and seasons to come. And maybe help you understand some, some things that you were kind of confused about in the past. So go, let's go ahead and get right to it, guys. The spawn here in Florida is going to go from the primary spawn, right? You're, you're looking December until March. That's when the, the majority of your fish are going to go into spawn. Your males spawn one time per year. The females spawn multiple times per year and not all females necessarily drop all their eggs in one nest or all their eggs during one spawn there are going to be outliers i have seen pl plenty of times i've seen waves of spawners up in november and i've seen them in uh april and may and june you'll always find those oddball kind of outliers uh, with all species of fish here in, in the state but the majority right the majority of the fish that are going to spawn are going to be december to march Typically speaking, your males are going to pull in first. They're going to be there, you know, as early as a week, sometimes more in advance of the females. Your water temperatures get down into the 50s. This triggers the females' eggs to start growing, and it's going to take them about two weeks to mature. If you have a warming trend coming up uh, after that temperature drop, and it starts to get the water temperatures up above 60 degrees uh, and warming and staying steady there, uh, you're going to expect to see males start to pull in. So guys that are fishing, you know, out offshore or outside grass lines and, and their fish just vanish, that's probably where they went. Uh, those males are going to go ahead up there and start making their nests and start waiting for the females to pull in. Oftentimes, but not always, I will see the majority of the females come in just before and after the full moon. It almost seems like the majority will be coming after the full moon is has passed you'll start to see those those females pull in uh, and as they pull in the males will court them onto the their nest onto the bed once they start to spin if you've ever seen them kind of like side by side spinning in the nest what's happening is the, the females dropping her eggs and the male is simultaneously fertilizing those eggs she might not drop all of her eggs in that particular nest she may drop them over multiple nests and multiple females may drop their eggs into a singular nest uh, with, with one male. And oftentimes you, you'll also see one male with multiple nests um, as well. Once the eggs are dropped, it depends on like the length of time it takes for those eggs to hatch and to fry, really depends on your water clarity, the water temperatures and the depth of those nests are at. It could take two days, it could take five days, it could take 10 days, a front could come through, uh, the nest could be too deep, uh, the water could get dirtied up and they don't get enough light and that nest can be a total loss uh, without any 
uh, human interaction whatsoever, just because of the weather, just because lack of experience, just because nature isn't perfect. But you can expect to see that female up there for two, four, five days, sometimes even longer. I know that all the information I read says that the uh, males guard the eggs, the males guard the fry. And this is true most of the time as far as the fry goes. You do have fry guarders. The males will stay with the fry until they're free swimming, until they're you know about an inch long, close to an inch long, and they're on their own. Then the male will go about, uh, about his business. But I do see so, so, so often, and I'll include some videos in this particular video here. I'll include some clips of catching post-spawn females, females that have already dropped their eggs. And it's like they, they guard the eggs until those fry hatch uh, and then they'll kind of go about their business. But they do linger around the nest for a few days thereafter. So don't expect them to come up, spin in the nest with the male, and then drop the eggs and disappear. Why is this information valuable? Why does it even matter? This will help you to determine, understanding what state that female is in, what state the male is in, will help you to determine you know, how you're gonna catch these fish, how long it's gonna take to catch these fish, you know, the difficulty level, whether or not these fish are worth your time whatsoever, whether or not it's a good idea to catch the male uh, or just to target the female. Generally speaking, I try to avoid catching the male at all costs. That female is not in any way committed to that male. He, she does not have to be with him. She can drop some eggs in his nest and she can drop some eggs in the next nest down and some eggs in the next nest down. She does not have to be uh, committed to that male. If you pull that male out of that equation, uh, oftentimes you can lose that female. Um, if you do make the mistake of catching the male, you know, you don't see the female anymore, she kind of vanishes on you, put the male back down there, let him do his job, let him go out there, court her, and bring her back on uh, to the nest. Things to remember, water temperature below 60 degrees. When they start, that particular weather starts warming above 60 degrees and is stable, right? You know, either, either stable above 60 or climbing, expect to see uh, males pulling onto the nests. Keep your eye out for females pulling into these particular canals or main lake areas, wherever they're spawning. If you go into a particular area of the lake and you see that there's a bunch of uh, empty nests, that does not mean that you missed it. That particular area of the lake could be going off sooner than another area of the lake. And then unless you're on the water often enough to know which side of the lake is warmer than the other, it's kind of hard to determine uh, which side of the lake that you're gonna target but uh, this is a key factor in whether or not a particular side of the lake is gonna spawn before the other side of the lake. 100% has to do with those water temperatures. And you'll oftentimes find that there's little weird curveballs that go on. You know, if you have a, a cold north wind blown into the south end of the lake, blowing that cold top water layer all the way over to that, that side of the lake and pushing warm water out into the outer coves, Expect for a lot of those fish to kind of follow that warm water. There's a lot of movement that goes on in Florida. That's why it's super hard to target fish uh, from December to March because they're constantly moving all the time. You know, you got fish that are pulling into spawn, fish that are pulling out to spawn. You got fickle post-spawn fish and super aggressive pre-spawn fish. And you have winds blowing like crazy out of the north and out of the south and pushing cold water around, pushing warm water around. You know, a good rule of thumb is if you have a shallow, darker water, it's going to heat and cool a lot faster. Those areas will, will probably spawn sooner than others. Areas that are protected from colder north winds will also oftentimes uh, spawn sooner. Where to look? Uh, you can look in protected areas and it doesn't have to be protected area as in a cove it could be protected area on the western shoreline of the lake that is behind some Kissimmee grass and between the Kissimmee grass and the seawall on sandy bottom not all beds are white um, you'll see oftentimes fish will spawn on roots they'll spawn on shells there'll be little dark patches basically you know where they kind of clean off the silt and sediment and you have this black spot of like roots from the vegetation the females will rub their eggs out um, on those particular areas. December to March, main time to be looking. Expect for the females to be there two, four, five days, somewhere in that vicinity. I usually try to count on two days. You will find fishing clusters. So like if you if you go into a particular area, so you go into a spawning canal and there's like three or four beds at the front, five beds at the front, and you go like halfway down the canal, you don't see any more beds. That doesn't mean stop. Make your way all the way to the back. There could be another cluster of them back there. The baits that I use to uh, target these fish are going to be two baits. I use two baits. You'll see that, you know, the big agitator of these fish are going to be small 
of, of those spawning bass of the males and both male and female are going to be small bait that are in there like um, wild shiners and bluegills uh, that are trying to eat those eggs. Yeah, remember those eggs are going to be there for two, four, five, six, even 10 days, depending on the conditions. You know, if it's, it's really cloudy and they're not getting a lot of sunlight and it's a deeper nest and it's dirtier water and it's staying cool at night and it's not really warming up, those eggs are gonna take much longer to hatch. These fish are gonna be super stressed out and they're gonna be under constant attack. Instead of going like beaver baits and creature baits and jigs and white baits and, and you know, black baits, and I just go with a simple swim bait, right? I generally throw it on a half ounce bullet weight. Um, this will help me keep the swim bait on the bottom of the, the bed. Please keep in mind the majority of the time, like, uh, you know, I'm out, I'm, I guide a lot and, and I coach a lot of people onto these beds. And, and I find that the more that you throw into that bed and pull it out and then into the bed and pull it out, it seems like your chances of catching these fish go down and the length of time it's going to take you to catch the fish goes up exponentially. I try to be as close to one and done as possible. If you throw in there and you don't see the male or the female around and you can't really see your bait real good, kind of moving around, you gotta pull it out and start back over, that's different. But you know, if the, the male and the female are up there or either or or both, and you're throwing that on the bed and you're kind of working it out real fast and then putting it back in work, it's not a hunger strike. You know, you're not throwing this to eat. You're trying to agitate them. You're trying to make them feel threatened, like their eggs are threatened and generate that, that particular strike. The other bait that I use is going to be a glide bait. A couple years ago, I started messing with the Buka Gill glide bait, the smaller one, uh, and the Buka Shad. And I, you know, I, there's a few beds I threw on, and boom, it happened like instantaneously. Kind of blew me away um, how easy I was able to catch uh, catch the fish, but I didn't understand why or the situation. So I continued to work at it, continued to work at it, and then seen some guy out in California throwing really big bigger glide baits, larger glide baits. And I thought, man, I'll experiment with that. You know, the female's dropping or has dropped some eggs and she's kind of sitting off the bed and the male's locked dead center and he's not moving at all. It's like he's sitting on top of the eggs, but he's not really willing to eat anything. And then the female will kind of sit off the bed and just dart in at a thousand miles per hour and, and blast a shiner and then get come way off the bed and kind of sit off at like five to 10 feet. That's the situation I found this to work extremely well. This bait takes quite a bit of time to get down maybe 10 seconds a foot or more, uh, it's got really kind of a neutral buoyancy. So I like to kind of put it past the bed. If I can, you know, if the female's quartering away or kind of like distracted by bait fish or something like that, that's when I kind of want to pitch that bait in there. I don't want to just throw it while she's sitting there staring at you. I stay back as far as, far as possible. I throw it past the bed and I'll kind of twitch it a little bit, very light jerks. Uh, just to kind of get her attention and I'll hit it again and it'll kind of glide in and hover over over top of the bed more times than not before this bait ever touches the bottom she's smoking it a lot of times they're biting the midsection trying to like bust the swim bladder if you've ever seen shiners and bluegills like all off kilter all out of whack around these beds um, it's because their their um, swim bladder bladder's been busted they'll just she'll just smack it and try and kill it if she starts hitting it and it's floating down to the bottom, if you can get it stuck on a root or something like that and keep it in there long enough and kind of shake it around, shake it around, she will eventually come and just completely inhale this. Um, I have not caught any fish under like three pounds on it. It's specifically for those uh, females that are will not touch a smaller bait. I don't care. You know, there, there was a bed we were on. I was, I was fishing with Tyler a few weeks back and we were like rock, paper, and scissoring for beds. And... You know, I'm poking out of bed, poking out of bed, and Tyler's like, dude, I really think that this is the bed. I think that's gonna be a lot tougher. I was like, yeah, you're right. So I chose to go with my original pick, which I kind of wavered from because there was like a bunch of slime and stuff in the way. It was a really a pain in the butt to get in the bed. I kind of went back to that particular bed. I was able to catch that fish. The other fish, they would come in full speed. You know, the female, the male would come in foom, and get within an inch of the bait sometimes blow at it, sometimes rub their belly on it, but never pick the bait up, never grab a hold of it. Tyler cycled through 15, 20 different baits. We stayed way off the fish. We weren't anywhere near it. The fish would just not, they wouldn't eat anything. I picked up a mag draft, which is what I had on one of my rods and threw it in there just cause Tyler's like, listen, I'm gonna pack things up and then we, we gotta head out of here. I really gotta go. I was like, okay. So I threw it out there and I realized that she reacted immediately. And I was like, okay, this is definitely a glide bait uh, type of situation. So I picked the glide bait up, 
the first pitch I threw it in there, uh, she absolutely smoked it and continued to do so. I think she hit it four or five times before I actually got to got her to hit it. Um, that particular bed was like four foot down, so it would take forever for this thing to get to the bottom. I never, it never got to the bottom. She would always hit it long before it ever got to the bottom, but it, it mimics a shiner perfectly. It just sits super level in the water. It's very natural. And it seems to me like when you get that female that just will not for any reason and the male's not engaging, this works good. The glide bait also I found to work good or a really large swim bait works really well when you have a, a male that's super hyper aggressive and the female is not. So the female's kind of sitting off the bed five, 10 foot. And every time you throw a bait in there, the male smokes it, the male smokes it. You're scared to catch the male. You think maybe if I catch the male, I might lose a female. Throw this in there, throw a big glide bait of some sort, you know, Storm Mirage or something like that. Let him continue to hit it and continue to hit it and continue to hit it and tell her that he can't defend the bed. He can't defend the bed. He can't defend the bed. She's gonna eventually get fired up and come in and absolutely crack this thing. And they'll hit it a million miles a minute. It's completely insane. If you haven't tried it, you have to try it. Try it. You don't have to buy the S waiver, right? Find whatever you like. This is super affordable. I think that these are like fifteen dollars. Um, the swim bait I use is a three inch uh, Bitters uh, Little Swimmer. I think it's called. I think it's called a Little Swimmer. Um, and I use one color. And I used to be worried about like seeing my bait on the bed, things like that. So I'd throw white and stuff like that. And sometimes that kind of spooks fish away. I find that you don't really need to see. Uh, necessarily see the bait on the bed. More importantly, you need to see uh, the way these fish are, are acting or reacting to your particular bait on the bed. This will help you to catch them more than actually seeing your bait. Um, so I don't even bother with white baits anymore, anything like that of that nature. All right, guys, now I want to talk to you about the amount of beds you expect to see. In the northern states, generally speaking, the majority of the fish from what I understand and from what I've been able to read and research and talk to other anglers, they kind of all move together and pull up together and their spawns over in a couple weeks. Because ours lasts several months, four or five months, not all the fish in the lake are gonna spawn at the same time. Don't think that you're gonna go out there and it's just gonna be the most amazing thing ever. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of times where I've like pulled into the very first spot and then found a whole pile of fish, but the better majority of the time, I spend hours upon hours to find those fish. It takes me a very long time. It is not an easy process, but if you look, you will find them. If you if you have to scratch that itch, if you're like, I gotta catch bed and fish today, it's something I wanna get better at, or it's something that really excites you, uh, and you wanna do it, you have to just put that trolling motor on high, make sure your batteries are charged, and get to moving. If you got somebody else in the boat with you and you're worried you're going to run your tra trolling motor down, because this is, happens to me. I put my trolling motor on 100% and just blaze for hours upon hours. That's super hard on your batteries, and it will run them down. If you do have the luxury of having somebody else in the boat with you, fire the motor up, stand on the front deck, and go. Try not to drive directly over the beds. Remember, if you, you drive over with your prop over top of beds, whether it be your trolling motor or your boat, you're gonna blow those beds out. That doesn't mean that that spawns over for that particular fish for the season. She's probably gonna have her her eggs in multiple nests and may pull up and spawn again. It's a waste, you know, it's a small percentage of fish that are gonna actually make the spawn. Now here's some crazy curveballs I'd like to share with you guys. I do understand that like a change in the weather can prevent or push uh, males off the, the beds, push females off the beds, kind of stall the spawn. I've seen it happen so many times this year. You know, I, I would see the males up there. They're up there for several days. And then we start getting warm in weather. I'm expecting the females to pull in any day now. I got my areas kind of mapped out of my head that like that I'm going to rotate as these females pull in. A front comes through, right? And it stops it in its tracks. I always believe that, you know, the falling water temperature is what stopped it. But I've seen uh, multiple times this year where the uh, you had nothing but males inside a canal. We had warm in weather. All of a sudden, there's females in the canal. Boom, front comes. No major drop in temperature whatsoever. Females gone. I was in there in the evening. There's there's females everywhere. Front happens that night. I come in the next day, barren wasteland. It's almost like the front came, they anticipated it happening, and it kind of stopped the females from locking on completely. As the day progressed, you know, I'm like, let me go to just kind of check back in these canals, see what happens. I pull back in the canal, and here comes like 10, 15 females five females are like pouring back in the canals. So and even a small front 
can kind of stall the, the, the spawn or, or stall the females from pulling in. It takes quite a bit, I noticed, to get those males out of there once they're in there. Some males are definitely better at courting females than others. If you do catch a female off a of bed, revisit that male later that day or the following day or the following day. Oftentimes that male will get another female back up there. Um, they're just better at, at getting the females than others. And I've seen other males, there was a male in the river this year that I seen, he was up there for over a month straight. Same bed, same place. And I would go in there, I'd see him and I'm like, still no female, still no female, still no female. You know, I don't know why why that is. He wasn't a particularly large fish or particularly small fish. I do see oftentimes little 10 inch, 11 and 12 inch bass getting some really, really, really big females. It's almost like they're a little bit more delicate and the females are uh, easier coerced by them. Males can be up there for a really long time and they might not necessarily get a female. Just because you have 10 males in a canal does not mean you're gonna have 10 females. It seems like it's about 10% of that. About 10% of the males you get up there end up with females, but just be sure to circle back for those same males. Oftentimes you'll have multiple females uh, drop in one nest. So just cause you caught one doesn't mean there's not another one around. It is really, really common for me to see four, five, six fish in, in one particular bed. Two lures, keep it simple. Keep your eyes in the water. Often from December into March, if you're really nuts like me, you start looking in November and you continue to look after March. I do find more often than not, the larger fish seem to, to spawn earlier months, the earlier months in the spawn, you know, your, your December, your January seem to have your bigger spawners, your February or March, you still get some big ones up there, but it seems to be uh, less. And you also seem one thing I'd like to say is uh, a lot of your main lake stuff starts happening um, later in the spawn. Aside from that, I think I covered it all. I think I'm giving you everything you need to know as far as how long the females are going to be there, how long the males are going to be there, you know, what causes them to pull up, when to start looking, where to start looking, what baits to use. If you have any questions or there's anything that you think I, I missed in this particular video, please leave so down in the comments section. I'd love to be able to address it for you and help you to have more successful uh, days on the water from now until forever. How long is it gonna take you to t catch a particular fish and whether or not you're gonna be wasting your time with that fish. If I go by and I see a male and there's a female off in the distance or I think she might have a female or he might have a female, I'm gonna just continue past that fish, right? I'm gonna get a good ways away, kinda out of sight, out of mind with this fish. I'm gonna take note, is it gonna be easier for me to see the fish if my boat's here looking this way, if it's here looking this way, if I'm looking straight across, kinda where that bed's positioned, should I be parallel to that, that fish, is there a bunch of cover behind it, where could that fish potentially wanna swim to? They're kinda like getting like this robotic type, type deal during the spawn and these fish will make the same circle kind of over and over again or take the same pathways. You never want to intercept that. That being said, I get pa way past out of the, the, the fish's range and I come back around. I try to really observe what's going on with these fish and what they're doing, where the best lighting is for me. I get going as fast as I can and I power pull down where I think it's going to be safe for me to stop and I kind of observe the fish and take a look. If I feel like I see the female there, I see the male there, throw up there, the male darts out of the bed or the, the female darts and I leave the lure in the bed and I kind of just shake it around, shake it around, see what happens. And it takes that fish 30 seconds to come back to that the first time. It doesn't really react and like circles again and takes another 30. You're, that, that fish is going to take you a really long time to catch. If you throw in that bed and that fish is out and back on that bed, one second, two seconds, it's less than 10 minutes. Just figure every second for like five minutes, 10 minutes it's gonna take you that long to catch that fish. If they're not coming in the bed at all and they're super disconnected, could be one of two things. Maybe you kind of missed her window, she's already dropped her eggs, she's lingering around, maybe she hasn't even locked onto that bed yet and the male's still trying to court her and you're kind of interrupting that or maybe you're, you're in a bad position, right? You're keeping her from going where she wants to go or where she wants to come from. They've already seen you and you're, you're too exposed. If you, you think that, that could possibly be the case, reposition your boat, get out of there, move as far away as you can, come back in from a different angle, stop the boat, wait a few seconds, take a look at those fish, see what they're doing, 
throw back in there. If you see that fish actually react, right? Like maybe the female gets involved or the male gets involved, they get onto that nest pretty quickly. It's gonna be a pretty easy fish to catch. It takes 20, 30 seconds for that fish to dart out of that bed and then takes a long time to come back. You're probably gonna be in pretty bad shape. Or if the female just disappears and you, you don't see her and the male won't engage, it's probably not worth your time. I would just move on to the next one. They seem like they're pretty locked on and I get positioned and I cast and they're spooky and they won't react and they blow off the bed. I look to myself first to see if maybe I positioned wrong. I try to get off that bed and reposition. When I won the ABA last year bed fishing, there was a guy working two of the bed fishing, two of the fish that were on beds. Uh, both of them had dropped their eggs already, by the way, but um, he was kind of in between where they wanted to come back to. They would like leave, circle behind his boat and want to come back and he would be in the way. So then they like circle and go out to the side and just stay really disconnected and not really get involved. And that was just a boat positioning issue. More often than not, that can be an issue. So think to reposition your boat. You don't need to be right on top of that fish, uh, looking at that fish. Get back as far away as possible. Generally, it's super, 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 super difficult uh, to see the female on a bed. She's gonna kind of be off the bed a little bit, you know, underneath the mat, in a shadow. She's gonna move along that shadow. She's not gonna dart out into like the light. It'll be, be tricky to see, but you know, figure every second, it's gonna take you five to 10 minutes. Every second that, that fish is off the bed, it's gonna take you that long to get that particular female or that particular male. Um, I got some really neat stuff coming down the line. You guys stay tuned, super neat. Nobody else is doing it. You guys are gonna be blown away. You're gonna absolutely love it. I really appreciate you guys' support. I couldn't do this without you. Until next time, everybody, tight lines.